Hello everyone, this is Ray Garner at Garner's Games. I want to take this time to talk to everybody about a magic format that everybody should be embracing, should be excited about, and should be promoted. And it's probably the least popular format that there is. And that format is standard. Now, I'm assuming that most of y'all went, what? <laughs> and the reason why is if you're an experienced player, and just give you a base idea, I'm a very experienced player. I've been playing Magic since before the Dark came out. So I've been at it for a few decades now. I've come in and out a couple of times. Uh, but since um, Mercadian Mask, I have been in Magic ever since, with never really getting out. A couple of sets I've kind of sort of skipped on, or didn't get well really invested in, because I wasn't a very big fan of certain ones. I'm sure most Magic players who have been at it for a long time have that. Type 2, when it was introduced, back when I was originally playing, the idea of that was to basically allow new players to come into the game, get involved in the game, be able to buy product off the shelf and play, and not feel like a total, to use the internet term, noob. I know a lot of people out there will talk about how much more they like Pioneer, or Modern, or maybe even Legacy or Vintage. But if you like Pioneer a lot, a lot of Pioneer players don't necessarily hate Modern. They're not a big fan. They have zero interest in Legacy and Vintage. Most Modern players don't like Legacy and hate Vintage. And the reason for that is the same reason why a brand new player will be immediately intimidated by you, you know, dropping out, you know, Jace the Mind Sculptor or another power card, which in the old days would have probably been classified as a power nine because they are so, so strong. Uh, so strong that, you know, at times they have been banned. Um, they've been, re you know, they've been restricted because we don't restrict or ban cards anymore outside of vintage. Um, you know, it's either you can play it or you can't. But it basically, if you are at a, to use the, the correct term, a lower tier or a lower strength level format, you probably don't like the higher tiers because they're full of gatekeepers. People who basically dictate the format because they were either playing long enough that they bought the cards when they weren't expensive or they have a big enough wallet that they can just go out and buy dual lands or, you know, full sets of shock and uh, fetch lands. And they can get, you know, four Jace Divine Sculptors if they want it, or a Liliana the Veil, or whatever, you know, power card they want. Force of Will is not an issue for them. $100 card? Sure, I'll take four. You kind of dislike those people because they keep you from being able to enjoy the game because they don't allow you to play. Unless you are, you know, a hardhead like myself, and you will fight your way through, and you will make your six hundred dollar deck find a way to beat their two thousand dollar deck, and kudos to you, it can be done. So, but that's not the discussion. The discussion is why people should want to promote standard. Maybe it's not your favorite format, but why you should encourage local people who are getting into the game to play standard, and why you should have a standard deck. To play them. The idea of standard is that people can come in and they can buy a booster box of March of the Machines, the most current set right now outside of Aftermath, and they can build a deck and they can play. Now, if you take a March Machine deck that is built standard legal out of a booster box, it is legal to play in Vintage. It is legal to play in Legacy. It's in you know, modern, pioneer, or standard is completely legal in every one of those formats. You won't survive, but you can legally play it. And if you take a deck like that, and you've just spent $120, $140, say you bought a couple other things to go with some extra booster packs, a bundle, you know, you've spent $200, $250, and now you have enough cards to build a deck and you play it and you're excited and you go to a tournament and you get raffle stomped into the ground every single game because while your deck is legal, 
it's not even remotely competitive up against the decks that are being played even in Pioneer. We don't even have to go all the way to Modern to find out why Standard needs to be promoted. Just stick with Pioneer. Pioneer deck is going to be full of Shocklands. It's going to have a ton of powerful cards in it. The best cards sprinkled out over the last... Let's see if I remember right. Uh, I believe it would now be nine or at least eight years of Magic. So the best cards from every set for the last eight years at approximately five sets a year. So that's 40-something sets of cards that you have to pick and choose from. Of course your deck is stronger than the guy who showed up with a single box. Or maybe even two boxes of booster packs and built their deck. Another reason is because in standard, it's not all about the rares. The rares are powerful. They're important. They're the linchpin of your deck. They are what allows your deck to usually go for the win. It pushes you over the top. It's the commons and uncommons, however, that get you to the precipice of actually being able to win the game. So, if you're a new player and you decide, hey, I got an extra $20 today, I'm going to go spend it at my local gaming store, and I'm going to buy three booster packs of set boosters, hoping to get that cool rare I want. I want the you know the latest Nissa or the latest Chandra. And I get my three booster packs, and I, I, I don't get the Chandra. But I do get my fourth negate for my blue deck. So now, you know, I have a play set of negates. Now, as an experienced player, you're like, I got 80 negates. I gave them four if they had asked. It's not the point. The point is, as a new player, you can be excited about the common cards that you get. Very excited about the uncommon cards you get because they fit into your deck. Maybe it's a card you don't know because, you know, you work 40 to 60 hours a week. You know, you have a wife, you have kids, you have a husband, you have kids. You don't get to spend all day on the internet searching what's the best card, you know, to put in your deck. But, oh, hey, I got this new card, you know, and it works perfect for my deck. Maybe it's just a simple artifact that provides a couple of colors of mana that you use. Something, you know, that an experienced player who, you know, buys a box every time the thing comes out would have thrown away. It takes the thrill of opening packs away from people when all it is about is the mega power cards. It also takes it away from players who are getting into the game to be able to play a game that they lose. Okay, they lose. But they're able to play 10, 15 turns before they lose. Maybe it's been a it's been decided for a while because they don't have an answer to you know one of your creatures. Or you have a spell that you've been holding because you're an experienced player and you know, I play this, they're done. But I don't have to do it right now. I can let them enjoy the game. I can let them have fun. I can let them experience magic and that hope. And maybe, maybe just maybe because you're holding that trump card in your hand, they get a trump card in their hand. It's able to stop what you have in mind. Maybe they pull off the miraculous win. Now they're excited because now they have a game they can talk about. Most experienced players have that comeback win. The game they should have lost, but they top decked the right card. Or their opponent made a miscalculation or made a misplay. And now you have that story that you tell for years and years about how this person that you had dead to rights came back on you. Or vice versa, you're the person that was had dead to rights and you came back, and you pulled it off. Um, one of my favorite stories I always tell, there was an experienced player that I played in a tournament. Second game, playing a red burn deck. Got me down to one damage. I top deck Basculus Caller. I put it on my biggest creature. It was bigger than anything he had. Four or five turns later, the game ended. I won with 20-something life left. Because I had built back up because of Basilisk Caller. And because he didn't draw a useful spell for three turns. And then when I finally got a spell that would have killed me, it was too late. I lost that round. He won game one. He won game three. The game he always talked about 
was game two, the one I won. Because it was an exciting, thrilling match. You don't want to be the guy that sits there and tells people who are getting into the game and buys a booster pack, you shouldn't buy that. You just buy what you need online. You shouldn't do that because they're a new player. Every pack in that car, every card in that pack could give them an inspiration for a new deck, could get them excited, could give them a reason to show up next week and play you in a tournament. And maybe you beat them. Maybe you don't. But you get to play them. The reason to promote standard is it encourages new players. It gets players into the game. It gets them excited. And it keeps them from getting so dogged beat down that they feel they can't do anything. You know, or, you know, if your local store primarily runs modern and, you know, the main tournament that they can come to is the modern tournament. Maybe the store even runs a standard tournament, but they work that day. You know, it's a Saturday afternoon tournament and they work every Saturday, so they can't come. Well, if you're just getting into the game and you've bought the two-player starter, maybe a commander deck, uh, you buy a booster box of Brothers War and March of the Machine, and you've got a few hundred dollars into this game now. And you sit down and you get stomped into the mud on turn two, and your opponent basically starts telling you, well, you know, I have a $1,600 deck here, and I'm probably not even going to the, win the tournament. If you have real bills, you know, you're not going to be encouraged to go out and spend $1,600 to build a deck so you can win on Friday nights. You just go to the movies. They're expensive. It costs you $20 to go. 80 if you're taking your family. But you're not going to keep playing Magic because you know you can't win. Not unless you're going to invest more money than you can afford. Standard is the beginner's format. And I also, I always hear people who are experienced players who, you know, have played for years and they're like, it's, it's, it's too expensive. It's too expensive to keep up with. Standard is expensive. I'm not going to deny it. I'm a Warhammer 40K player as well as a Magic player. Many people talk about how expensive Warhammer 40K is. Warhammer 40K pales in comparison to keeping up with Magic. However, most players do keep up with Magic. Most experienced players buy at least a booster box with every single release. Now, now there are other players who just go out and buy the, their, their single cards um, and build their deck up. But there are so many players who want that lottery feel. Yo, buy a box, sit down, bust open the packs, see what you get. That's why box opening videos are so popular on the internet, because people like to open boxes. They like to see what they get. So the majority of experienced players still play the lottery game. They still buy. They keep up with standard, even if they're not building decks for it. They have the ability to easily build a standard deck. Easily to have that deck to go, oh, hey, you're getting the magic. You know, you're, you just got in. You want to play? Oh, you're just, you're wanting to see what's like? Hey, I got a couple of decks that I've built that I can show you how to play. Every single person that you get into Magic is another opponent, is another player, is another potential friend for you to sit down and have a good time with. Whether it's eventually playing Commander or Pioneer or Legacy or Vintage or Modern, it doesn't matter what they eventually play. The gateway in the Magic is standard. That's the reason why it should be promoted. That's the reason why it's the most important format in Magic, despite Wizards of the Coast promoting Commander as if it's the second coming of the game. Um, but Standard is what gets new players. It's what keeps the game alive. And I know that there are going to be people out there who disagree with me. That's fine. I say this as an, a player with 20, gosh, six years experience in the game. Uh, more experience than that in gaming in general. Um, as far as gaming goes, I started in D&D in the 80s when Dwarf was still a class, not a race. Uh, I played Battletech. I played Warhammer. I played Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! 
I'm starting to learn uh, um, Digimon. I play Star Wars Legion, Shatterpoint now. Uh, X-Wing I've played. I play Pathfinder. Yeah, I've played tons of role-playing games. Battletech. I have played it all. Magic is one of the longest living games. It's the number one card game in the world because of new players. Because I'm the old fart. There are very, very rarely that I run into a player in any tournament, anywhere, that's older than me. And that's because the game keeps getting new players. And at some point in time, if you're the guy sitting here saying that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, at some point in time, you were the new player. And you got into it probably because either your local game store or one of the local players or one of your friends helped you get in. And you got in playing new cards. You got excited when you opened booster packs. Help pass it forward. Help be that guy or that gal that promotes the next generation to play Magic when you've moved on, when you're not playing Magic anymore, or when you're the old fart sitting there playing Magic across from a teenager 30 years younger than you, and they're whooping you because they're up to date on the new cards and you're still trying to make Land of War Elves work as the best card ever. But enjoy and pay it forward. Thank y'all. Have a great day.